call is monitoring at any time. Three-way calling or call forwarding an inmate's phone call is unauthorized and may result in disciplinary action to the inmate, which could include the loss of phone privileges. Thank you for using IC Solutions. You may begin speaking now. So, I got Mac Minister on the phone right now. What's good, Mac? Oh, you know, man, some more of it. You okay. Know? So, so where are you speaking from right now? I'm in um, High Desert State Penitentiary in um, okay. Las Vegas. Well, Indian Springs, 06, March, March the 2nd, okay. 2006. Okay, so, so you've been in jail for, for nine years now. Pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Nine years okay. of change. Okay. And, and what was the charge that, that that put you in prison? Double murder, two counts of, of conspiracy to commit murder. Okay. And what, what was the sentencing that you got? I got uh, four lives without the possibility. Okay. So you're, you're right now in prison for quadruple life. With no possibility of parole. Yeah, basically. Yep. Okay. When they read that to you, what what really went through your mind? Well, when when they read that to me, if you um, if you know, uh, if you read my statement that was in the paper, when they said all that to me and they asked me did I have anything to say, I said, Yeah, God is the greatest. That was a that was my last words to him. Okay. Which is so true. Vlad TV. Oh, okay, and since that time you've been doing you've been doing nine years, nine years in prison. You know, what do you think has been the hardest thing of actually being in this type of situation? Being away from my family, being away from my you know, being away from my daughter, not being able to um, you know, protect my loved ones, just um, you know, um, just being away from my people, to, you know, not being able to provide. And, um, you know, just, uh, like I said, take care of my family. Shit. Absolutely. Now, have you come in contact with any other artists, you know, during the, during these past nine years, going through the system? Well, um, when you say artists, I mean, you know, uh, I, yeah, I could say, I mean, you know, um, I talk to Sam Queen a lot. You know, I talk to, uh, um, I talk to Snoop a couple of times. And, uh, okay. Oh, um, shit, be legit, I, I hollered at Bila a few times. I mean, it's, a, okay. it's just a chosen few people. I mean, Mike Epps, I, I, I talked to Mike Epps, you know. Um, shit, I, uh, my folks went to go see him. He went right in his pocket and gave him a few dollars for me, and he, and he had me good for a while, you know what I mean, without him even asking, you know. I mean, the comedian is the realest motherfucker, you know, <laughs> and that ain't one of my jokes. <laughs> Now, have you ever been locked up with any other rappers or, or you know, actors or anything else like that? Nah, nope, nope. Okay. Nope. I mean, okay. OJ ass down here. <laughs> oh, OJ down there with you? No, he ain't. He ain't right here though. But he in the state of Nevada. He ain't right here. They got him in uh, one of them old, uh, you know, one of them, them uh, preschool yards. He ain't. He ain't on. He ain't on this shit. No. Nah. But, uh, not this year, but uh, nah, he ain't on this yard at all, at all. Okay. So you actually have an appeal coming up. Indubitably. Okay. Let's talk about it. Well, um, to be quite honest, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a win. I'm a, I'm a get home. I'm a, I'm a hand this time right back to him. You know what I mean? This is just, you know, um. I'm just going through the formalities. This is some of the shit that they do when they go out their way to railroad you because first and foremost, you know, in it's like in a murder case, there's one of the three elements that you must have. It's either DNA evidence, a weapon, or eyewitness testimony. In my case, right. they don't have none of the three. Okay. They don't have none of the three. So with that said, they had my attorney, he got on the stand and he testified against me, which is an egregious violation of attorney-client privilege. No lawyer can testify against his client, you know what I mean? And then they used an um, a FBI informant to um, come to court and say that he saw me um, summer of 06, 
I told you I was in jail March 06. So this dude said he saw me summer 06 and then I was at the Bellagio and I was bragging to him about some shit that I am not even capable of doing. And to make a long story short, that was corroborating evidence. One person over here saying this that's an informant and then the attorney said this. Both of those both of those testimonies is really no good because the lawyer can't testify. He cannot do that. No lawyer can reveal anything against his client, no matter no matter what it is. Except it's, it, there's two there's two exceptions to that rule. When you file a writ of habeas, then you give up your attorney client privilege, then that lawyer gets on the stand and he can say whatever he wants to say about you. Or if you tell an attorney that you're about to commit a crime that's going to hurt somebody, any type of serious felony, by him being an officer of the court, he can reveal that. In my case, none of that happened. They they had this dude, um, and we, uh, it was an evidentiary hearing, which is called the Petrocelli hearing. And the Petrocelli hearing is a hearing where um, a person comes to court and they testify and the judges see if anything that they're saying is relevant. So when the lawyer came to court, the lawyer that testified against me, he hired a lawyer. So when he was on the stand, his lawyer specifically told Judge Stuart Bell, Keith Brower cannot testify against Mr. Dow. If he testified, he could be disbarred for um, violation of attorney-client privilege, and he can also be sued. Stuart Bell said, oh, he's going to testify. And the attorney who was representing the attorney, there was my attorney that testified against me, he said, well, he's willing to go to jail. Stuart Bell said, well, he don't have to worry about going to jail, but he's going to be in trouble. So basically, it was a threat under the table. And I took that threat like when once I started to recognize that this is a good old boy state, basically what he was telling him was, you're going to be in trouble as far as finances because we can, you know what I mean, appoint cases to your law firm. When people come to court, you know, they appoint cases. It ain't always a public defender. They got private offices that, um, you know, um, do pro bono. And um, they can take those clients and appoint them and then the state pay, pay for the investigation or anything that you need in a serious crime. So basically what he was telling me, we're going to make sure you don't get no money around here. Well, I mean, I'm sure all that's going to come up in the appeals. Oh, yeah, man. When I go when I go to court, man, they ain't got no choice, man. You know, they ain't got no choice. They... They really fucked up in the worst kind of way. I mean, if they're going to do this to you, the way that they did me is the best way for um, for them to do it if um, if you plan on, you know, for filing a, a writ of habeas or any type of appeal to get back. So um, I'm not even mad at it. You know what I mean? I'm strong enough to go through the process. You know, it ain't nothing above my head and below my feet. I can't handle our dismantle. You know what I mean? Um I, I truly believe that, um, you know, God sent you through certain things. He sent you through it to get you to it. You know what I mean? So in, in, in his plan, in his plan, this was something that he sent me through and he revealed a lot. I know who's who. I know who my friends are. I know who my enemies are. You can't step to me and, and, and try to make me believe in, in, in no shape, form, or fashion that you're with me or you against me. I know the identity of all individuals. A lot of A lot of young kids grow up listening to hip hop and hearing hip hop glamorize prison and, you know, make it seem cool to go to prison. And, you know, it's almost like you get stripes if you've done prison time. You know, for someone who's been in prison for the past nine years and has quadruple life, what would you tell someone who hasn't been to prison yet? Man, first of all, prison is for suckers. So trust and believe, I'm surrounded by a bunch of suckers. I got caught up in the matrix, man. You know what I mean? And for a motherfucker to think that this shit can you stripes, everybody ain't even strong enough to survive the conditions that they send you under. You know what I mean? Um, but every youngster out there just know one thing for sure. When you come to the penitentiary, they going to strip you naked and look in your booty. If you want a motherfucker looking in your booty, bring your old tough ass on to the penitentiary. See, and for me, I had a 24-hour lockdown, 23-hour lockdown, something, most of the time 24. And the reason why I would get to 24 because I was refusing to strip out. 
I'm not doing none of that. I'm not, you know, if you go into the workers' unit, it's certain jobs that if you take, like, if you work in the kitchen and whatnot, and I always try my best to program, but once I get to the kitchen and they're telling me I got to strip out, I'm not doing none of that. You're not looking at my booty. I'm not done. You're not with none of that. So a lot of my time was, um, I, I, ain't gonna, I mean, it was hard, but I could deal with it, though. I got I, I got used to being by myself in the cell. I got used to working out by myself in the cell. And it just made me stronger as a man. I refuse to compromise integrity. I wouldn't give a fuck what it is. It's certain shit I'm just not going to do. And everybody ain't built like that. Right. You know, this shit don't give you no stripes. You know what I mean? At all. I mean, um, as a man, I mean, you know, sometimes we go through it, and if you start it, yeah, you come up out of it, and you, you, you a rock star when you go through something of this magnitude, and you come out of it, and you solid. You know what I mean? And when you're in the game, you get, this is part of the shit to come with the game. You know what I mean? Right. There's a lot of cats that's hip-hop, but they ain't ready to go to nobody's penitentiary. Motherfuckers going to tell them they mama, they stepmama, and everybody else that's, that's in the vicinity not to do what they sent me up against. And, you know, they didn't, they tested me. They tested me with that. You know, like I was saying, um, um, I was telling 40 Glock about um, when, I, when I had first got arrested, they had, they had came and got me and um, I was in, I was on Wilshire at Club Kaboom, and you know it's some gang shit happened between the Southside Compton and the one, uh, the, the one eleven, and one of the dudes from one eleven killed the dude from Southside, and they had him incarcerated. And they came and got me, and and when I was in jail, they was talking to me like, man, we can help you because this is a cold case, and if you help us with this cold case, we can help you. And I told them bitches straight up, your cold case gonna be a froze case. If I got to be the motherfucker to help you, yeah. Yeah. Well, you have solid to. as a yeah. It'd be solid, stiff as a brick. Yeah. Right. I know. I know that you have "Thou shalt not snitch" tattooed on your back, yeah, right? Absolutely. And, I, and 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 by no means would I compromise. I die, go to hell, do life in jail for. I tell on any motherfucker. That ain't gonna happen with me. Period. Man, come on, man. And then, and then the cold part, you know, by me going through what I'm going through, I can see, um, you know, a motherfucker and a kicker elephant if he catch him down and kick him all around. You hear me? So this showed me a lot. I've seen a lot, and I'm not going to bring a motherfucker down for, for me to go home. You know what I mean? Can't never a motherfucker ever say that I, um, I, I compromised or I did anything to, um, pull myself out and pull them in or say something about I don't do that. This is why I frown upon well, I'ma say society frown upon motherfuckers like me. They have a um you know they, they frown upon a real motherfucker. You dig what I'm saying? And everybody niggas out there they rap and they say they real come on man, for you it's a punchline for me, it's a way of life. I ain't got no choice but to be who I am. I was bred a certain way. I was raised a certain way. It's in my DNA. It's deeply rooted. And right. motherfucking spewed it. You hear me? So that's what it is with me. And and and, and the little youngsters out there, they ain't they ain't ready for that, man. You know. Hopefully they hear this message and and, and I can um you know um build some character and some uh some honor in them because mm -hmm. honor and um, integrity go a long way. God bless honor. Now, have you actually seen inmates come in and, and end up killing themselves because they just can't take it? Man, absolutely. There's a bunch of motherfuckers that committed suicide. Man, let me tell you something, man. This is this is some real shit. One night, a few nights, I, I, I was in my cell, and I, and, I, and, I, and I see some shit walk by. So I got up, and I, and I looked, and it wasn't nobody in it. And, I, and I'm tripping because I'm going, when the, when the, when the COs count, you hear their keys. Or they, you know, they flash their light in your door. So I'm seeing this go, and, and it was one of my folks who had been down for a minute, and I got in. I said, man, I'm just talking to him one day on the on the chair, and I said, man, I said, man, you ever uh, seem like somebody looking in your motherfucking cell? He said, Mac, he said, I'm going to tell you like this, homie, a lot of motherfuckers that killed themselves up in here, and it's a lot of motherfuckers that have been murdered up in here by these COs, and um, there's some spirits around this bitch. And I believe 
And I believed him so much because it didn't just happen once. It was a few times. You know, that motherfucker, uh, where I was at, you know, a lot of people had, um, was handcuffed, snatched down some steel stairs, and they did. This is why my attitude was the way that it is. You're not, if, if, if the motherfucker feel like, if, first of all, if you come to my cell and, and I get the wrong spirit from you, you're not putting no handcuffs on me. You're not putting the motherfucking slag braces on me and pulling me down some stairs, nor am I about to be in a position where I'm going to take off all my clothes and all that old shit. And, no, we're not going to do none of that. I didn't sign up for that. I ain't mm-hmm. signed up for that. We ain't going to do that just to go outside to the yard for an hour. We, we're not going to do that. Com. Period. Or go to the fucking kitchen to work for 10 cents a month. We're not go- I'm not going to be able to do it. Yeah, I, I, I just ain't going to be able to do it. Bottom line. So. Yeah, I mean, I really hope that, that a couple of people listen to this and really understand what, what comes with a certain type of life. And this and this right here is what you're listening to. This is this is someone who's doing quadruple life without the possibility of parole, and and has to take that, and has to has to actually go through it and 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 try to maintain his principles as he's doing it. It's not it's not an easy task. I don't think most people could do it. Absolutely not. It, it, no, it ain't easy being me. Please believe that it, it, it's not easy being me because, like I said, I have a a, a um a recalcitrant spirit as anyway. I was I, I just have that type of mentality then not only that, um I refuse to submit to a frame up. I'm not you know, even when I went to court they offered me a one to ten. They was like, Man, we give you a one to ten, you already got four years and you can do two. So take the one to ten. And I told them I'm not taking a one to ten seconds. Because there's nothing there to remotely suggest I committed a misdemeanor. This is why my attorney testified against me. And I know that they was just sending me through something. And like, and, and a lot of times, God lets you go through it. That's why I was telling you. Um, when, when I was telling you the first time, I was about to talk about the book of Job. How Job okay. went through certain things. You know? Right. This is, this, and, 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 and the test that he had was, you know, the devil came to God, and, 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 and uh, he came to heaven amongst the end, with, with some of the angels, and God asked him, what are you Zoom doing here? TV. He said, I'm roaming the earth, looking and, and for mischief and misconduct. So why are you here? You must be here about my servant, Job. And he said, yeah, you favor Job, but if you let me do certain things to him, I guarantee he'll curse you to your face. So God said, do anything you want to do to him. He sent him through it. Job lost family members. He lost all his property. He lost everything. He even lost his health. But he kept his honor with God. So when I, when I, use, when, when I use Job as a, um, as a reference to, to, to Mac Minister, I took a lot of losses. I went through a lot. But I've never compromised integrity. I've always stayed solid. I've always, uh, from, from day one, I was A1, and I always was like, I'm going to beat this. This this is something that I'm going through. This shall pass. And when I came, let it be duly noted, it was three other people that was in the holding tank that had got overturned. One white dude had eight lives without the possibility. You had two other Hispanics who had um, double lives without the possibility. They all got their sentences overturned. They was all reversed. Do you, do you hear me? Yeah. Understand that Nevada is the understand Nevada is the number one overturned state in the United States. The judge that I had, Stuart Bell, was the number one overturned judge in Nevada. They kicked him off of the bench. Any attorney will tell you no lawyer can testify against his client. So for a ju- for the prosecutor to even suggest to a judge to allow my attorney to testify against me, that's prosecutorial misconduct. My, 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 my due process has been violated in so many ways. It's pathetic. 
There is no way in the world that the shit happened down here should be kept quiet and nobody should be upset about it. People should be upset. People should be on Twitter right now to know his lawyer testified. Check it out. Don't just let me tell it to you. This shit is public record. Everything that happened in the courtroom, you can see. So for anybody to uh, sit back and not be upset at that, for anybody not to, you know, to raise their voice, because if you do it to me, you'll do it to anybody. It's just like all the shit that's going on right now. Now, now you're actually raising money for your defense right now. Is that correct? Absolutely. Um, really, okay. I'm, 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 um, I'm in the process of really, you know, like I said, um, I'm laced with this game. They can't take that from me. They can't take that ingenuity from me. My game gun loaded. My mouthpiece is a deadly weapon. I still pop this shit on a high level from here. So, okay. I'm, um, you know, I, I still um, got verses. I still got intros and outros. You know what I mean? This is what I do. I, 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 I pop that real shit. You know what I mean? I'm about that real shit. This is why they didn't want to drop the charges and let me go. The judge made that abundantly clear. He said, he said to the prosecutor, when, when, when I turned down that little one to ten, he said, we cannot allow him to walk out of here with that thou shalt not snitch on his back. Do you know the message that that was sent to the communities all across America? For him to walk in here and walk out of here like that? What you want me to do? If I wanted to besmirch myself, then it's okay to go home. If we could put that bitch tag, that's just like Sammy the Bull. If we could put that bitch tag on you, we don't care what you done did. Because we know that your word holds ain't, ain't, ain't worth a, a, a motherfucking soy bean. So if you would have testified, if you would have testified against other people, you could have gotten a, a greatly reduced sentence. Probably be home by now. Right now, this is what you're saying. I'm gonna tell you this: if I would have told them some of the shit that they came at me about, I, there wouldn't have been no. Redu I would have went home. With okay. a tail, with a tail of a rat on you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't think they build That's they build them like this anymore. I think I think that uh, you you was the last of a dying breed. The last of the motherfucking Mohegans, the realest nigga breathing. Please believe that. And 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 and, 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 I'm, and I must say this: when they came to see me, and I told you motherfuckers that when they said that if you help us with this with this cold case, that we can help you because a cold case will grab so many gang members off that they're willing to even just dismiss your case. They wanted it with prejudice. They'll let you go. When I told the motherfucker that his cold case would be a false case, if you think that I'm finna compromise my integrity. The motherfucker said to me, man, are you serious? Are you fucking serious? And I told that bitch, I am as serious as the AIDS virus in its final stages. I'm dead serious. Huh. Now get your motherfucking ass up out of here. That's exactly what I told him. See, and everything that I'm telling you, this is on their recording. And the boy from, the boy from L.A. that they had him, that they had, that they... That they just thought that I was just going to lie. I mean, you know, motherfucker lied on me, so I guess they say, you know, pressure bust a pipe, make water rush up hill. Make a real nigga squeal and make a bitch nigga kill. So when you're going through some shit, you, you, you do anything for, uh, most motherfuckers will. They're going to do anything to go home. I want to go home. I want to be with my family. But I can't compromise integrity. All I can do is maintain my innocence and say, I didn't do what you said I did. And there's nothing to remotely suggest that I committed a misdemeanor. But yet and still, you violated me so egregiously to, to the point to where you got my lawyer testified against me, and then you go get an informant to say something that I don't even know. And then come to find out that this informant that they got, his name is Antoine Bouton. This bitch been going around the country testifying for the feds. So he the dude that... When you got a drug case in Texas, he the one coming to court talking about he been dealing with you for so long and that he been buying drugs from you. Yeah. But this is how the system is rigged, though. All right, man. You want you got some that? Yeah.
Hey, uh, um, I'm going to leave this ministry just a little dose of it so a motherfucker can get a bar of it and come get at a motherfucker. I'm used to this bullshit. It all started from the time of birth. From the pussy hole to the prison hole, I won't allow my current conditions to stagnate my growth. I'm under a gangster oath. Live, learn, uplift. I plead the fifth and accept my gift. And due to my prison cell, though that motherfucker wasn't meant to do me well, I'm a reverse the intent and fully represent. I've been placed on temporary pause for a worthy cause. It was a minor setback for a major comeback. There you go, Glad. That's what we're going right. to do right there. That's what it is. Now, if anyone wants to reach you, how can they do that? Okay, um... Andre Dow, first name A N D R E, last name D O W. Six fifty, P.O. Box six fifty, High Desert State Penitentiary or High Desert State Prison, Indian Springs, Nevada, eight nine zero seven zero. And I have a phone number that you can call me, um, area code seven zero two two nine zero. Seven nine eight five, and I'll have another contact number four one five six five zero eight five three four. I got intros, outros. Help me help you. Let me pop this shit so we can spread this game. You know what I mean? Because like I said, they they made they got me they they got me in change, but they ain't got this game that's that's on my brain. So um. I'm trying to spread my hustle, you know what I mean? And anybody that's trying to contribute anything, I got I got this lawyer that I'm going to get um, by the name of um, Cliff Gardner. You can Google him. He's certified and official. All he do is appeals. So I'm trying to raise 50000 you know what I mean? And um, I go to court. I got a court date June the 9th of this year. And um, one or two things is going to happen. Um, they either gonna let me go or they gonna set up a, um, another court date for an evidentiary hearing. But um, I need proper. Rep- I need to get this money together so that I can have proper representation to get off this slave plantation. So with no hesitations, go in your pocket and donate something to the mat. Real motherfuckers that hear this, you know what I mean? Come together, man. Call somebody that you know, somebody that know somebody that know somebody that respects a real nigga. And let's come together. Let's get this, man, so motherfucker can get up out of here, man, in a real way, man. Right. So, um, some is good. Some is good. More is better. It is plenty. All right. That's what it is, man. Yeah. Half the label's locked up. Yeah. How difficult is that to deal with, you know, in the label? Keep pushing. We miss the homies. We wish they was out. That's a real conversation. Nothing, nothing was scripted. That's a real conversation he was having with Orlando Scandrick. And he likes Dread. And I ended up going to their house. Played her the video. The next morning she asked me to send it to her. I had no idea she was going to post it. And we woke up in the morning and the world was going crazy.